USB 4. 11 years after the initial release of USB 3, USB 4 is finally arriving. So what is it and why should you care? Well, in this video, let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here and welcome to yet another FTJ video. FTJ is new and needs your love, so go on, ring that damn bell. Now before we start, here's what you should know about USB in general. The USB standards that we use today are set by the USB IF or USB Implementers Forum. They are a non-profit organization that was formed by a group of companies that initially developed the USB standard. Today we have the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Intel, Texas Instruments and a bunch of other major tech giants all contributing to the USB IF. The focus of the organization is to support the development of USB devices and figure out all the related compliance procedures and whatnot. Now, during 2019, they have finally chosen to move from the USB 3 to USB 4 standard. Now, before we talk about USB 4, let's take a quick trip down memory lane to see how USB has evolved over the years. The very first USB standard, USB 1, came in the year 1996. It had a maximum signaling rate of 12 megabits per second, and back then the standard wasn't too popular. USB as a standard only started gaining momentum with the launch of USB 2 in the year 2000. USB 2 brought with it a maximum signaling rate of 480 megabits per second, and this was the start of high-speed USB. We still see a ton of devices that use the USB 2 standard to this day, and one of the primary reasons is because it brought in smaller connector options such as micro USB, and it also brought in better power transfer standards, allowing mobile devices to be both connected and charged over USB, which made it really popular. USB 2 was then followed up by USB 3 in the year 2008 with a maximum signaling rate of 5 gigabits per second, which is 10 times faster than USB 2. Now, even though USB 3 did launch almost 11 years ago, it doesn't mean it has been left unchanged. Since its initial launch back in 2008, it has gotten a few revisions along the way. Now, these revisions are the most confusing part about these USB standards. To be precise, it's the naming of these revisions that have been the cause for confusion. Let me try to keep it simple and break it down. USB 3.0 launched in 2008 and had a maximum signaling rate of 5 gigabits per second, right? Five years after that, in 2013, we had the introduction of a new USB 3.1 standard. At this point, the existing USB 3.0 was renamed to USB 3.1 Gen 1 and they created a new USB 3.1 Gen 2. The USB 3.1 Gen 2 doubled the maximum signaling rate to 10 gigabits per second. Now they could have just left the naming scheme for USB 3.0 unchanged, but they chose to change it to USB 3.1 Gen 1, which caused some confusion to say the least. They took this whole naming thing a step further with the launch of USB 3.2 standards that came during the fall of 2017. With it, USB 3.1 Gen 1 was now again renamed to USB 3.2 Gen 1, and USB 3.1 Gen 2 was renamed to USB 3.2 Gen 2, and we also got a new standard called USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which added two-lane interfacing support, and that doubled the maximum signaling rate to 20 gigabits per second from 10 gigabits second uh, of the previous revision. So boiling it down over the course of 11 years of USB 3, we've gotten two new revised standards and some incredibly confusing naming schemes. USB 3.0 alone was renamed twice, and you'd at least expect them to name their latest revision as USB 3.2 Gen 3, but that hasn't happened. They ended up calling it USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which apparently the 2x2 there stands for dual lane interfacing. Like why even do all this, right? None of it makes sense. It would have been much simpler to call these standards USB 3.0, 3.1, 3.2. You know, you could have been done with it. But it is what it is. Now, this is here's where we stand with USB 3, and this finally brings us to USB 4. USB IF has announced that it would step forward into the USB 4 spec by the middle of 2019, and just like previous years, it would have backwards compatibility with older USB 2 and USB 3.2 standards. The major change here is that Thunderbolt 3 will be blended into USB 4, and by doing this, they will have now doubled the throughput to 40 gigabits per second across a two-lane interface, compared to the 20 gigabits that the USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 offered. And the integration of Thunderbolt 3 means that data and display protocols can now be simultaneously transferred across USB, and it also allows you to daisy chain multiple 4K displays and other Thunderbolt 3 devices into one port on your laptop or desktop. Going forwards, these changes will make Thunderbolt much more accessible to manufacturers and consumers alike. 
Thunderbolt is Intel's licensed product that manufacturers have had to purchase to utilize. But USB, on the other hand, has always been royalty free, meaning manufacturers now don't have to shell out licensing fees. And one other crucial detail is that in order for Thunderbolt 3 to work, you need a Thunderbolt controller that had to be added to system separately. However, Intel says that going forward, it's going to be baking in Thunderbolt 3 support with its upcoming 10 nanometer Ice Lake processors, thereby eliminating the need for these Thunderbolt controllers. So manufacturers now have the benefit of both not having to pay royalties and not having to spend on adding in Thunderbolt controller chips either. This should make the adoption of Thunderbolt much more widespread. The royalty-free model of USB also means that other chip manufacturers can bake in Thunderbolt 3 support into their silicon without paying royalty to Intel. This could lead to AMD also adopting the standard, but that remains to be seen. What we do know for sure is that USB 4 brings us closer to that one cable for all solution that was promised with the introduction of the Type-C connector, and it is something I'm personally looking forward to. With that, it is enough time we get to a close. So what do you guys think about explanatory videos like this? Should we make more such videos? Do let me know in the comments below. And I guess that's it. Have you checked out these videos yet? If not, do so. You might just like them. And also, talking about like, like, dislike this video based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And ring that bell, please. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching FTJ by C4 Retech. And I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.